Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to do an introduction to the root locus. So as a motivating example, let's take a look at this closed loop block diagram. Pretty simple one. We have a plant, a second order plant. Um, let's see, with a pole at zero and another pole at negative six and then a very simple compensator just a proportional controller with a gain k the closed loop transfer function is k over s squared plus six s plus k now if you're doing some sort of design you might have to pick a k to satisfy some design requirements there's a few ways to do that, but it might also be helpful to be able to look at a single plot in the complex plane of all possible closed loop poles for all possible values of k, and that's what a root locus is. So let's just take a look at that in a brute force kind of way. Here's the characteristic equation. For this particular case, it's pretty simple. It's a second order characteristic equation. I could solve that in many different ways. Um, so, but let's just look at what happens as we move k around. Let's see, at k equals zero, if I look at this, my uh, poles are going to be at zero and negative six. And if I go to one, it turns out the poles, if we solved that using the quadratic formula, we'd get negative 0.18 and negative 5.8. I could go to 2 and I get negative 0.35, negative 5.6. We'll just do a couple more. Let's do 9 and 10. At k equal 9, the two poles are actually the same, negative 3 and negative 3. And then as I start going above k equal 9, they become complex. So at 10, I have negative 3 plus minus j. Now, let's go ahead and plot this. I'm going to draw some different axes instead of the ones I drew above, just because I want a little bit more space. And I'll mark this off in, um, let's go by threes. Let's say this is, um, well, we can put that at, at uh, plus 2j and negative 2j. Great. Now, let's go ahead and start plotting these poles. So I'm going to do k equals 0. I have 0 and negative 6, just like that. As I start increasing k, I get negative 0.18 and negative 5.8, like so. Increase it a little bit more goes like that, like that, go all the way to k equal 9, and I actually have two poles right at negative 3. And I'll indicate that I have two poles there by putting that little right angle and putting a 2 by it. And as I increase k, they start going off into the complex plane. Whoops, not quite that far though. Uh, about up to here. At negative 3 plus minus j. Now, if I were to draw some arrows on here. I could say that for k equals 0, I have these two points at negative 6 and 0. But as I start increasing k, the closed loop poles start going like this. They run into each other right here at negative 3, and then I get these branches that go off into the complex plane. Now, I didn't do too many down there, but I do know that it actually goes like that, just a, horse, a vertical line in the complex plane. And as we keep going out this way, I can even label this and say, well, this is when, what happens when k goes off to infinity. So actually, what I've just done is sketched a root locus. This is all possible closed loop pole locations for all possible values of positive k. By having a root locus in front of you, you can tell very quickly what your design possibilities are. And then perhaps what it could tell you is that you need a different compensator. So let's say you wanted the poles to be here and here. There's no way it can happen with this compensator. So you might have to do something different. And that is the benefit of having a root locus. So now we're just going to take a little bit of time 
and do a couple things. Figure out what is the transfer function that we need in order to do a root locus. And we'll do some examples of that. And then we'll just create a root locus in MATLAB. In later videos, we can focus on doing design with root locus and how to sketch them more completely. But for now, we'll just rely on MATLAB. Okay, so the transfer function that we want to extract, or that we need to extract, in order to do the root locus, and what I mean by that is you can use tools like MATLAB. It has an rlocus command, and you can give it a transfer function object. We'll call it, I'll just call it GL. If you give it that if you give it the correct transfer function object, then it will create a root locus. Now, because root locus is all possible closed loop pole locations for all possible values of positive k, you might be tempted to think that the transfer function you need for using MATLAB to do a root locus or to sketch a root locus would be the closed loop transfer function. Of course, that's wrong. What you actually need is the loop transfer function, and we'll denote that as GL. So in the previous example, if we were to have written the characteristic equation in this form, 1 plus some parameter k times the loop transfer function, we would have ended up doing this. Here's the characteristic equation. I need to get it into this form. And so what I could do to make that happen is I could divide this part by all the stuff that doesn't have k in it and divide the k part with, of course, the same quantity. And so I get 1 plus 1 over s, s plus 6, times k. So now I can see that this, based on this form, is my loop transfer function. Now we also knew that just from looking at the block diagram, right? Because the block diagram was this, and if I want to extract the loop transfer function that doesn't have k in it, I mean technically the, the loop transfer function is k over ss plus 2, but the thing that I need for the root locus is the part without the k in it. So I can bring the k over here, do this, and boom, I've got the loop transfer function. This is the thing Oops, this should be been a 6. This is the thing that we use to create the root locus. Now, let's just do one more example of that. Let's say I have something a little bit more complicated. So we have a compensator that looks like this. Here's our plant. And let's stick something in the feedback path. How about we'll put the k down there. So there's our design parameter k. And let's go ahead and form the closed loop transfer function and extract the characteristic equation and then obtain the loop transfer function that way. And of course what we should see is that it is exactly equal to this times this times this without the k in it. Let's do it. So let's see, we have 6 over s, s plus 1, s plus 2, that's the forward path, over 1 plus 6k, s, s plus 1, s plus 2, and s plus 5. Now, notice that the denominator is already in the form 1 plus k gl of s. Aha! So we could actually just extract our loop transfer function right now, but let's just keep going and simplify this, or at least write it as a single rational function. So we get that. We could extract the characteristic equation. And then finally, write it in the form of f equals 1 plus k g loop s. 
And that tells us that g loop is actually equal to 6 over s, s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 5. And so this is the quantity that we would use as an argument to MATLAB's commands like rlocus or rlocfind, and that we would also use when we're sketching the root locus later. Now let's just take a look at using MATLAB to create a root locus from this particular loop transfer function. Let's create our loop transfer function. I'll call it gl. And let's see, I have six in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'll use the convolution command to uh, multiply out some of these polynomials. See so one, two, and then one, five. And I think that does it. So there's our, our loop transfer function. And there's several different commands within MATLAB where you can um, probe the root locus. One of them is just our locus. You could just give it the loop transfer function as an object or as an um, argument. And there it is. So what we have here, and I'll zoom in just a wee bit, is it plots the k equals zero points. Maybe I'll make this a tad bigger too. It plots the k equals zero points but does not label them. So here they are at these little x's at zero and negative one, negative two, and at negative five. And then these are the branches, and it doesn't show you the arrows either, but these are the branches of the root locus as k is going off to infinity. So there k is heading off to infinity. Now, we can actually see that more dynamically if we go to a different MATLAB command, or RL tool, and what this will do, this gives us the root locus plot again, but it gives us these little dots, and it started off with some values of the of the gain k and showed us where the poles would be but the interesting thing here is I can drag around those little dots so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one and drag it over to here at this configuration these red squares indicate the k equals zero points and now I'm going to take this one and start dragging it as I increase k we can see the closed loop poles moving around and boom it goes unstable at this point and then off they go into the right half plane. Now these two get hard to drag because they coalesce at a single point, but I can grab hold of this one and keep dragging it. Now of course the closed loop system is wildly unstable at this point, but I can see how the poles are going as I increase k. And I can drag these back down as k goes down to zero. Zip. Maybe grab this one to get it all the way back. Now you can do a lot more with this than just drag around the poles, um, but we'll get to that in a, in a later uh, video. So let's go back and do one more example. Let's do one more example where we deviate a little bit from the traditional loop transfer function to allow us to use the root locus to find all possible closed loop pole locations for all possible values of the parameter in this block diagram, which is A. It's actually a pole location of the compensator. Now the loop transfer function for this closed loop system is the product of these two transfer functions. Now that isn't really what we're going to use for the root locus though. What we have to have for the root locus is a characteristic equation that ends up in this form. Now I'll still call it the loop transfer function because certainly it's the loop transfer function of something. It's just not the loop transfer function of this block diagram. But if we can get the closed loop characteristic equation into this form, then we can do the root locus, find all possible values of the closed loop poles for all possible values of positive a by using this transfer function. So let's do it. y over r is 3 over s, s plus a, s plus 6, divided by 1 plus that same quantity. And if I expand this out a bit, 
I get this. And so here's our characteristic equation. We can multiply that out and we'll get s cubed, 6 plus a s squared, plus a 6 a s plus 3. Now I need to get it into this form. So I need to segregate the a's from everything else. So let's do that. s cubed plus 6 s squared plus 3 is equal to a s squared plus 6 s. And now I can see that I can write this as 1, oops, that's a plus. I can write this as 1 plus a times the quantity s, s plus 6, over s cubed plus 6s squared plus 3. And this is the loop transfer function that we need in order to find the root locus to give us all possible closed loop pull locations for all possible values of positive a. We could put that into MATLAB or we could use our favorite sketching techniques that are covered in another video to create that root locus. So just to summarize, we went through the idea, the concept behind a root locus, and then went through a bunch of examples of how to extract the loop transfer function necessary for creating it, and then played around a little bit with MATLAB using our RL tool and our locus. Again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.